The slippery slope is the idea that if one thing happens, inevitably a whole bunch of other things will happen as well. So if the president wants to give a speech to school children, then that means the president is indoctrinating school, trend with, school children with his political ideology, which means our schools are political indoctrination centers. And since indoctrination breeds zealots, and zealots will do anything for the cause about which they are zealous, then public schools are becoming camps to breed child soldiers for Obamaism, which means Obama is doing what Hitler did. So presidential speech to school kids equals Fourth Reich. Slippery slope. A leads to B, B leads to C, eventually A leads to Z, and you not washing your hands before dinner means you're on death row. <laughs> you hear this kind of argument all the time in American politics. It's a be afraid argument. Explaining to a patient their option to fill out a living will, that should be a reimbursable expense for doctors under Medicare? That's death panels, pulling the plug on grandma. Don't do thing A now because hypothetically that could lead to thing Z down the road. Sometimes though it's not hypothetical. Sometimes you don't need to imagine the hyperbolically awful thing that might happen someday as a consequence of some smaller step you take now. Sometimes you can just watch life careen down the slippery slope right in front of your eyes. In the late 70s, a former second runner-up Miss America and sort of popular singer named Anita Bryant became the nation's celebrity spokesperson against gay rights in America. She led a campaign for Dade County, Florida to repeal a county non-discrimination policy. Anita Bryant argued that the county must be allowed to fire people from be for being gay because gay people are predators who recruit school children into homosexuality. Bryant drew attention with statements like, quote, Gays can't reproduce, they have to recruit, end of quote. The war goes on to save our children because the seed of sexual sickness that germinated in Dade County has already been transplanted by misguided liberals in the U.S. Congress. Cong this is one of the foundational myths of anti-gay activism. Gay people are out to get kids. That's the gay agenda, to recruit kids to be gay, because that's how gay people get that way. They're lured into it by recruiters who sexually abuse them as kids and thereby turn them gay. So opposing gay people's rights is a means of protecting the children from the gays. I say this is a myth because the people whose job it is to know these things say it's a myth. They've proved it. The American Psychological Association says homosexual men are not more likely to sexually abuse children than heterosexual men are. Quote, no specific psychosocial or family dynamic cause for homosexuality has been identified, including histories of childhood sexual abuse. That, of course, does not stop anti-gay activists from making that assertion, that gay people are out to recruit kids, making that assertion over and over again. Jerry Falwell telling supporters of his old-time gospel hour by direct mail in 1981, quote, please remember, homosexuals do not reproduce, they recruit, and many of them are after my children and your children. Senator Jesse Helms of North Carolina pushing for years for anti-gay restrictions in federal education law because... The homosexuals are out to recruit in the schools. In 1995, Congressman Pete Hoekstra's committee convening hearings on parents, schools, and values. Hearings that in part investigated, yes, homosexual recruitment in the schools. The proponents of Proposition 8 in California, the proposition to roll back gay rights in that state, making their case just last year. And they can reproduce. Yeah, come on now. So they got to recruit. And they're trying to recruit our kids. Here's how you fall down the slippery slope. You make this argument, Anita Bryant, Jesse Helms, random anti-gay orator guy, uh, you make this argument that you oppose gay people's civil rights because gay people are out to get kids, never mind the facts, you like making the case, we're out to save the children from the homosexuals who prey on them. What's the next logical step? If gay people are out to get the kids, how are you going to protect the kids? Keep gays away from the kids. Keep gays from being declared normal. Protect people's rights to fire people for being gay if they don't want to work with them. Protect people's right to kick somebody out of their housing for being gay if you don't want to live near them. Protect the children. Counteract the recruitment. Show that homosexuality is wrong. Make homosexuality illegal. Make homosexuality have severe punishments. Make it have really severe punishments. Make being gay punishable by death. It is not a logical fallacy, the slippery slope, if it really happens. If the arguments made by anti-gay activists ultimately redound to serious legal proposals to kill people for being gay. 
In October 2008, Uganda held its National Prayer Breakfast. The National Prayer Breakfast is an event started by the family, mostly known as C Street here in the U.S., a powerful secretive religious organization in the U.S. with ties to many members of Congress. One of the founders of Uganda's National Prayer Breakfast, a member of the family, floated the idea at an event associated with that breakfast that Uganda should have a kill the gays law, that homosexuality should be punishable by life in prison, or in the case of aggravated homosexuality, uh, it should be punishable by death. A few months later, in March of last year, the guy from the family who drafted the bill hosted a delegation of anti-gay activists from the United States, preaching, surprise, that gay people are a threat to children. They're out to recruit in the schools. And they also said nobody is stuck being gay if they don't want to be. It's a learned behavior. It can be cured. A few weeks after their visit, the Kill the Gays bill was introduced. Meanwhile, the anti-gay populist press in that country started campaigning. This publication published a list of allegedly gay Ugandans, along with, in many cases, their addresses and their photos. You can see a small yellow banner underneath the word, underneath the S in Ugandas. It says, hang them. Because of the American connections to this, the fact that the author's a member of the family, uh, which is tied to a lot of American politicians through C Street and elsewhere. Because the resultant publicity earned criticism for the Kill the Gays bill from our president, Secretary of State, lots of the politicians associated with C Street. It is fairly widely believed because of that coverage that the Kill the Gays thing is over. It's not. Its author expects it to be voted on in a matter of weeks. And its author is here in the United States promoting Anita Bryant's old line that he's only doing this to save the children. The author of Uganda's Kill the Gays Bill joins me at the bottom of the slippery slope next. The reason we know basically anything about C Street and the secretive religious group behind it, the family, is because of Jeff Charlotte's two books on the subject. The family is most famous for operating C Street, a secretive subsidized dorm for members of Congress in Washington. It was linked to the Governor Mark Sanford sex scandal and the Senator John Ensign sex scandal and the Congressman Chip Pickering sex scandal. But as Jeff Charlotte has reported, the deeper reaches of the family are bigger than sex scandals. The groups essentially helped along a number of super shady causes and characters in countries around the world for decades, including some of the worst dictators in modern history. As part of Jeff's ongoing reporting on the activities of the secretive religious group, he has been keeping us updated on the Kill the Gays bill, promoted by the family's key man in the nation of Uganda, a member of parliament named David Bahati. It was also Jeff who let us know that David Bahati had been granted a visa to come to America. David Bahati is here now. He sees this trip as an opportunity to promote here his Kill the Gays bill. Joining us now for the interview is the member of parliament in Uganda who introduced the bill and is promoting it, uh, Mr. David Bahati. Mr. Bahati, thank you very much for your time, sir. It's nice for you to make time for us. Yeah, great to be at your uh, talk show. Um, you were granted a visa, as I understand it, to attend a conference in, in Washington, the International Consortium of Governmental Financial Management. Um, I understand that it's been reported that you were not allowed into the conference once you arrived. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. One of the reasons they gave was uh, that uh, uh, because of the bill that uh, I proposed in Parliament, uh, their denial for me to enter the conference was uh, extremely unfortunate, uh, but as I said, does not deter me from pursuing a cause that I think is important, a cause to defend the children of our, f of our country, and a, a cause to defend the family of, of, of Uganda. In the cause that you describe as defending the children uh, and the family in Uganda, um, it's, it's your anti-homosexuality bill. And the provisions of that bill would establish life in prison for any homosexual act, uh, as well as execution for what the bill calls aggravated homosexuality. Um, how is that defending the children and the families of Uganda? Uh, you know, Rachel, we have a huge problem in our country. Uh, the problem of uh, people who are coming from uh, abroad, investing in money to recruit children into a behavior that we believe that uh, uh, is a land behavior and can be unlearned. We know that homosexuality is a human right here in Uganda, but also we need to appreciate the fact that it is not a human right across, across the world. And certainly in Uganda, we don't take it as a human right. And as we debate this issue, it is important that we do tolerate one another, listen to one another, understand the background uh, of, of, of one another, and respect one another. And the background that I come from is that 95% of the population does not 
uh, support homosexuality. Uh, we believe that man was created to marry a woman, and that's the purpose for which God created us, a purpose for our procreation, and that's a higher purpose that we believe in. We believe that our children should not be recruited in something that they don't believe in. Uh, the clause that you are suggesting in the bill, that you are talking about in the bill, the, uh, that proposes uh, death penalty was actually a, a, a small clause in the bill which was uh, imported from uh, a bill that we passed in 2007 regarding the firement of, of, of children. It's a, a clause uh, meant to uh, uh, discipline those uh, adults who defile uh, uh, minors. And uh, by the way, it is a, a clause that uh, because of the international outcry that, that I'm, I'm, I'm very much willing to, uh, to drop when the bill comes to, to the House for debate. Um, it, sh it should be noted that the, among the seven different clauses of aggravated homosexuality is one uh, where you are el eligible for execution if you are a serial offender. Um, does that mean that if you are a person who has been um, convicted more than once of homosexual sex, would that make you a serial offender and eligible for the death penalty? I know there has been a lot of spin, uh, negative propaganda about this bill using that cross. And I want to make the, the, the record straight. Uh, I am not in a hate campaign. I do not uh, hate gays. Uh, I love them. But at the same time, I must protect uh, our children who are being recruited uh, into this practice. So, so what, um, what evidence do you have for the recruitment of children into homosexuality? That allegation has been made uh, to justify all anti-gay legislation in the United States going back uh, for more than a generation. It is a claim that is rejected by all, for example, major medical organizations in the United States and by all other responsible authorities that have looked into it. You're saying specifically that foreigners are investing in Uganda to recruit children into homosexuality. I've heard claims like that over and over again. I have never, ever heard any credible evidence of it. Uh uh, Rachel, I need to tell you that it is not an allegation. It's a fact that recruitment is taking place in Uganda, especially in single-sex schools. It's a fact that is very disturbing. It's a fact that is not only disturbing people who don't believe in homosexuality. Even the pro-gay uh, uh, groups have condemned this. Uh, so it is something that is uh, uh, factual. And uh, all you need is, uh, is uh, to get these facts. And I will be very willing to publish these facts. I, I, I have heard a lot of other people ask you for evidence on this. I have heard you assert that it is fact. I have never, as I said, seen any evidence that is fact. How, for example, do you suggest that children are recruited into homosexuality? If you wanted to recruit somebody into homosexuality, how would you do it? And what do you think the tactics are? Uh, I can tell you that in the last uh, seven months there has been a lot of investment in terms of money close to 15 million US dollars has been invested uh, to fight the bill but also to to recruit children and this is how they do it they go into a school they recruit some people teach them entice them with money to lure them into this practice and this is something that is disturbing everybody. This is something that disturbs, and I'm sure you're also being disturbed about this fact. To be clear, sir, you're saying that 15 million U.S. dollars has been, is being spent in Uganda in the past seven months, not only to oppose the bill, but to pay, give money to teachers to go into schools to pay kids to become gay. That's your assertion? Uh, not to not to pay teachers, but to use, they recruit young people, they, they, they pick on young people, uh, recruit them, teach how them on how to move, entice them. There are videos that have been uh, moving around, tell them that uh, a man sleeping with a man is okay. Uh, so this is something that is, 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 really, is really disturbing, and this is the focus of this bill, to protect our children, this is also to defend the tradition of family. Sir, this is also one of the... F I'm I didn't expect to find much international commonality around debates over gay rights and homosexuality, but what you're describing um, is one of the foundational myths 
of how gay people have been slandered and attacked in almost every country in which these laws or laws like the ones that you're proposing has been debated. The idea, this myth that gay people are out recruiting kids, asserted as if it is baldly true, no evidence of it is ever, is ever, ever, ever been put forward in any way that can be evaluated. And every responsible authority who's ever looked into it says that it is a myth. If you think that there are videos out there of young people being recruited to homosexuality in Ugandan schools, why haven't you released them?